Welcome to the E sessions of brand marketing. This is the fourth series of module 4 for the students of LG Integrated MBA. In this session, I, Dr. Sushmita Sugala, will be discussing brand hierarchy. Brand hierarchy. This is a graphical representation of the firm's branding strategy, which displaying the common brand elements across the firm's products. It displays how a product can be branded using new elements or combining the existing elements. It shows how the existing brand elements we use and how we combine them for any other product. A brand hierarchy can include multiple levels. Now these are different ways to define brand elements and the levels of hierarchy. Some of, some of the levels of hierarchy are taken from top to bottom. So it could be the corporate or company brand, example General Motors, a family brand, individual brands or modifier level brands. It could also be the product description. Here we are talking of maybe the mid-size luxury or the sports sedan. Some levels of hierarchy and its issues. Corporate or company brand level. This is the highest level of the hierarchy technically which always consists of one brand the corporate or the company brand. Now this recognizing or it recognizes that consumers may not necessarily draw a distinction between the two or know that corporations may subsume multiple companies. At the family brand level, this is the next level uh, of which is also called as a range of brands or an umbrella brand which is used in more than one product category but is not necessarily the name of the company or the corporation. For example, Conangra, a healthy choice family brand which appears on a wide spectrum of food products including the packaged meats, soups, pasta, sauces, breads, popcorn, ice cream and some other notable family brands for companies. Now these, they are able to generate more than $1 billion in sales, which includes the Kit Kat, Mountain Dew, Doritos and Quaker Foods. Individual brands are restricted to essentially one product category. Multiple product types may differ on the basis of model, package, size, flavor and so forth. For example, in the salty snack product class, Frito uh, Loafers, Frito Corn Chips, Doritos, Toritella Chips, Lay's and Ruffle Potato Chips and Roll Gold Pretzels. These, each brand has a dominant position in its respective product category within the broader segment of the salty snack product class. The main advantage of creating individual brands is that we can customize the brand and all its supporting marketing activities to meet the needs of a specific customer group. Thus, we would see that the name, logo and other brand elements as well as you know, product design, marketing communication programs, pricing, distribution, all these focus on a certain target market. Moreover, if the brand runs into difficulty or it fails, then there is minimum risk that the brand runs into. The disadvantage of these individual brands are uh, the difficulty or the complexity and the expense of developing separate marketing programs so as to be able to build sufficient levels of brand equity. At the modifier level, marketers 
must often distinguish brands according to the different types of items or the models. This means that to designate a specific item or model, type or a particular version of configuration of that product. In product descriptor, we would be able to see that there is an important ingredient of branding strategy. Now the product descriptor, this helps consumers understand what the product is and what it does. It also defines the relevant competition in the customer's minds. Some guidelines for brand hierarchical decisions. First one is deciding on which products to be introduced. Here, the principle of growth, survival and synergy is considered. Secondly, it is deciding on the number of levels. This comes from the principle of simplicity or the principle of clarity. Third one is deciding on the levels of awareness and types of associations to be created at each level. So here we are looking at the principle of relevance and the principle of differentiation. Then we move on to the fourth one that is deciding on how to link the brands from different levels of a product. This is helped by the principle of prominence. And lastly, the fifth point, deciding on how to link a brand across various products. So here we are looking at the principle of commonality. The books which have been used for reference are, thank you.